have our negative thoughts. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 villains who weren't evil, just broken. Just for once, let me look on you with my own eyes. For this list, we'll be looking at the most iconic but damaged on-screen villains who still pull at our heartstrings, despite their wicked ways. Since we'll be discussing major plot points, a spoiler alert is now in effect. Which movie or TV villain do you think has the most devastating origin story? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Jaime Lannister, Game of Thrones Jaime Lannister established his villain status in the very first episode of Game of Thrones. After being discovered in a compromising position with his own twin sister, he pushes a child from a high window and never showed a hint of remorse. The things I do for love. <laughs> Still, once we got to know him better and watched him suffer through some humbling experiences, we began to find excuses for his bad behavior. I don't care about revenge. Jamie's tenure as Kingsguard to Aerys II was pretty traumatic. Being branded as a murderous traitor as a teen must have hurt, especially when he should have been the savior of the hour. Jamie's good deeds don't cancel out the many bad ones, but you've still got to feel for the guy. He touched me. The moment he set eyes on me. Number 9. Severus Snape, Harry Potter Franchise In the early Harry Potter movies, Professor Snape makes it his mission to victimize and humiliate our young hero. Mr. Potter, our new celebrity. However, the more we unearth Snape's backstory, the more his nastiness makes sense. Draco Malfoy occasionally cuts a pitiful figure, but if we're comparing damaged villains, his troubles are nothing compared to Snape's. Ginny and James put their faith in the wrong person, Severus. Rather like you. The potions master was raised by an abusive father and tormented mercilessly at school. He later lost the unrequited love of his life and was forced to live with the guilt for his part in her death. Tied into unending servitude with Dumbledore, he tried to make amends, but still spent his final days despised by all. No, Snape wasn't very nice, but we don't think he deserved all that. Always. Number 8. Darth Vader, Star Wars Franchise Darth Vader is the quintessential old-school villain, but underneath it all, he's still human. Just help me save Padme's life. I can't live without her. Throughout his origin story, we watch Anakin Skywalker grow and suffer while wrestling with the darkness inside of him. However, even before the prequels, there was plenty of room to feel sorry for the masked man. By Return of the Jedi, Luke's father had done a lot of bad things. I killed them. I killed them all. There was a bit of torture, a few slaughtered innocents, and an entire civilization destroyed on his watch. But he's hurting, and you know he wishes things were different. Darth Vader may have crossed too many lines to get his happily ever after, but it's never too late for some last-minute remorse. Ultimately, he dies an honorable death. Help me take this mask off. But you'll die. Nothing can stop that now. Number 7. Eric Killmonger, Black Panther The antagonist of Black Panther feels at once like a terrorist and also a freedom fighter. Eric Killmonger was abandoned as a child after his father was killed by his own brother, the King of Wakanda. You will return home at once, or you will face the council and inform them of your crimes. He then made it his life's mission to overthrow the rule of his cousin T'Challa. However, his end goal was the liberation of people of African descent around the world. Y'all sitting up here comfortable. Must feel good. It's about two billion people all over the world that looks like us. Eric is a dangerous man, but the little lost boy isn't far below the surface. Even his enemies can see that he doesn't play the villain just for fun. He's fighting for a cause that he passionately believes in. Yes, he had to be stopped, but we're glad he got to see that sunset before he died. Just bury me in the ocean with my ancestors that jumped from the ships. Because they knew death was better than bondage. Number 6. Loki Odinson, Marvel Cinematic Universe 
Although technically a villain, Thor's little brother seems to spend half his time in the Marvel Universe balancing on the precipice of redemption. I don't enjoy hurting people. Still, he never quite fits in with the good guys and is constantly backsliding into his dark little world. He is the trickster god, after all, and mischief is his business. However, it's Loki's outcast status that makes him just so likable. No, you took me for a purpose. What was it? An adopted son, he was always in the shadow of his golden-haired brother, and his strengths, wit and sorcery, were not valued in Asgardian society. Plus, he believed he was destined to turn into a villain, which caused a self-fulfilling prophecy. Complex and unfathomably charming, he's become a firm favorite with fans despite his dastardly deeds. Do you truly think so little of me? Loki, I thought the world of you. Number 5. Megamind. Megamind. The Chosen One is a common trope in superhero movies, but the role of the antagonist often seems just as predestined. Megamind plays with this idea, presenting us with a main character who's raised to be a supervillain, despite actually being a pretty nice guy. What about everything you've just said? About judging a book by its cover? Dropped into a prison and pushed around at school, Megamind eventually decides to become the villain everyone supposes him to be. If I was the bad boy, then I was going to be the baddest boy of them all. With such a distinctive look, how could he be anything else? However, after defeating his arch nemesis Metro Man, the big blue bad guy discovers that he's lonely. He's then forced to create a new adversary to fight, but finds himself unwittingly playing the hero. And frankly, it suits him much better. I finally had a reason to win. You. Number 4. Cruella de Vil. Cruella. The depiction of Cruella de Vil subtly alters with each new retelling of her story. I've discovered she likes to throw women who offend her sensibilities out of her parties. In Dodie Smith's novel, she's a decadent London heiress with a furrier husband. In subsequent adaptations, she lost the man and gained a fashion career, but remained as wicked as ever. However, the newest incarnation of the character is much more sympathetic. You're really trying to be the Estella that you wanted. Mostly. Emma Stone's Cruella was picked on at school thanks to her distinctive hair, and later orphaned by a pack of vicious Dalmatians. Young Cruella takes to the streets of London but soon finds her feet as a fabulous fashionista, and she doesn't even wear real fur. The character remains a self-proclaimed bad girl, and as eccentric as ever, but we wouldn't exactly call her cruel. I'll take it from here. But Cruella was alive. All right, we should put on some music or something. Lighten the mood. <laughs> Number 3. Prince Zuko, Avatar The Last Airbender. Referred to by one critic as the best redemption arc in the history of television, Prince Zuko's journey from ruthless antagonist to loyal member of the gang is a thing of beauty. I know my own destiny, uncle. Is it your own destiny? Or is it a destiny someone else has tried to force on you? He's introduced as the villain of the piece, but it's not long before we realize how much hero potential Zuko has. We discover that standing up for others got him banished from his kingdom. He was even forced to fight his own father and sacrifice his honor. Please, father, I only had the Fire Nation's best interest at heart. I'm sorry I spoke out of turn. You will fight for your honor. I meant you no disrespect. Zuko's sense of right and wrong is tested throughout his quest to find the Avatar. Like Kuvira from the spin-off series The Legend of Korra, Zuko slowly comes to accept that he's one of the bad guys and begins to make a change. Because I'm confused. Because I'm not sure I know the difference between right and wrong anymore. You pathetic. Number 2. The Joker. Joker. The Joker comes in many guises, and every version of the character has a little bit of sad mixed in with the bad and the mad. I just don't want to feel so bad anymore. Of all the movies that feature this creepy persona, arguably none strayed into the tortured villain territory more than 2019's Joker. As the first movie dedicated solely to the infamous antagonist, it delves deeper into the character's psyche, painting him as a man in the grip of mental illness. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
Arthur Fleck, alias The Joker, begins the film as a working clown and failed stand-up comedian. He also suffers from uncontrollable laughing fits due to a neurological condition. Taunted and attacked by thugs, Fleck commits his first murder, laying the groundwork for his descent into nihilism and insanity. It's magic. I'm just trying to make him smile. Well, it's not funny, is it? Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Sandman, Spider-Man 3. He did everything just to help his sick daughter. My daughter was dying. I needed money. Dr. Doofenshmirtz, Phineas and Ferb. The evil doctor had to contend with mean kids, bad parents, and a balloon for a best friend. He became my best friend in the whole world, yada yada yada. Then one tragic day when I was protecting our garden as a lawn gnome. Wh whatever, you remember that backstory. Shu Wenwu, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. He became a powerful assassin in order to seek revenge for his murdered wife. She was the only one who called me that. And when she died, I was lost for many years. Regina Mills, Once Upon a Time. A forced marriage and a broken heart made her into a wicked queen. Mother, why have you done this? Because this is your happy ending. <laughs> what? Homelander, The Boys. Raised in a lab without love, all he really craves is adoration. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Maleficent. Maleficent. In the original Sleeping Beauty animation, Maleficent truly is the mistress of all evil. You poor simple fools thinking you could defeat me, me, the mistress of all evil. Bad to the bone, she delights in cursing babies and tormenting princes and parents. Disney's live-action prequel gives its anti-heroine a sympathetic backstory and a reason for revenge that has nothing to do with a missing invite. I must say, I really felt quite distressed and not receiving an invitation. <laughs> Betrayed by King Stefan, whom she once loved, Maleficent turns to the dark side, but she never lets it claim her altogether. Even lead actress Angelina Jolie called her character, quote, slightly crazy, extremely vibrant, a little wicked with a big sense of humor. She's less cruel and more vulnerable here. And although we love the pantomime villainy of the original, we can also appreciate the nuance of the 2014 movie. I will not ask your forgiveness, because what I've done to you is unforgivable. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.